Hey guys, so today we're going to continue our discussion on backup power for grid down situations. Now in the first video we talked about the tight budget solutions and this time we're going to up that to the medium budget solutions. Now I've got three ideas for you, so let's get started. Okay, so if we move up to $1,500 budget, now we're looking at a significantly larger generator. Uh, this is the Westinghouse WGen 9500 dual fuel. Um, I actually have this generator and I did a detailed video review on it. I'll link that below. Now, this thing's worked great for me so far and provides a ton of power. Now when you get into this you're probably not going to use extension cords anymore. I mean you could but you're probably going to want to tie right into your home's panel. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, one, you could just use a lockout. This is the inexpensive way to do it. So this just prevents you from being connected to the generator and the utility at the same time. You could probably get an electrician to install that. Or you can go to a transfer switch like this one. Uh, you can use a simple one or this one has actual individually switched for each one of the circuits in your house or maybe just the critical loads. So I think this is really a good way to go if you can afford the extra three, four, five hundred dollars. Um, there's advantage to this I won't go into detail now, but essentially if you were to get solar later on, this allows you to run some things off solar and other things off the utility all the time, which is really uh, great. That's what I do here. Anyway, we're still running off of gas, but now we can also run off of propane, so it's dual fuel. You put in a big tank or you can run off the little 20 pound tanks if you want to. We're going to burn significantly more fuel now guys. We're, we're the, the smallest generator was just using one 5 gallon can. Now we're going to burn up to five of these a day if you ran this thing 24 7. Now of course you don't really have to do that so you can, you can work with it to however you want. Uh, if we look at the specs, we're putting out 9,500 watts continuous. So it's got a 30 amp and a 50 amp circuit. <clears throat> um, plenty of power, 12,500 peak. It's 211 pounds, so now you're, you know, you're not going to carry it around. It's on wheels. And what can you run? Well, just about everything you can run off of this thing. So you can run multiple window units, lights, refrigerators, freezers. And because now it's a... 12240 generous split phase you can run that well pump and you can run your water heater and other big stuff I still don't run my main uh, heat pumps that run our house I still don't run those on it but all this other stuff you can run it and you can run most of it at the same time even this puts out a ton of power pros uh, 12240 dual fuel tons of power uh, the bad news is now is this is no longer an inverter generator. So we're not getting that clean sine wave anymore. We're getting dirty power now. And that means you can't run your sensitive electronics off of this. So there's ways to get around it, but we'll get into all that. This is very loud, man. This thing is loud. Um, like most generators in its class, they're all loud. And of course, we're going to be burning a lot more gas. But in general, I mean, for $1,500, this thing's going to run most of your house, and I find it to be uh, really useful. The way I use it is I, I use it to just charge a battery bank, and I could do that in two hours, and then so I'm only running it two hours a day, and then I run off my battery bank. But again, that's all in the detailed video I'll link below. Okay, so another option is a PTO generator, still under $1,500. Uh, I have this generator and I did a, a review video on it. I'll link it below. But now you're putting all your money into the alternator. So you get a real high quality alternator because you're not paying for the engine to drive it. So you already have a tractor like this and you can just use that as the motor to drive the alternator. So you get kind of a higher quality um, product there because you're not paying for the engine again. Uh, you can run this into your home panel with a lockout or the transfer switch. Get all that power running right into your home circuits. In my case, my tractor runs off diesel and I already store 200 gallons of diesel just for the regular tractor work that I do around here. So for me, this makes great sense because I've got a great supply of fuel for it. 
and I can run this thing for a long time. Uh, my tractor runs uh, pretty fuel efficient too. My little diesel Kubota will run this thing forever. Uh, this one puts out 7,200 watts continuous. It's basically a 30 amp circuit. Uh, 7,800 peak. Weighs 110 pounds. Of course it'll weigh more once you add the platform to it. You can run multiple window units, refrigerator. It's 240 volts so you can do the well pump, the water heater, all the big stuff. Uh, and this is clean power because you put all your money into that alternator now you got a lot of power and it's clean power so you can run anything off of it. Of course the big drawback is if you don't have a tractor then this is a non-starter. Adding and subtracting heavy loads will cause you to have to adjust the throttle and the tractor is kind of a pain unless you have auto throttle. So those are the cons um, but basically uh, this is a great solution, you know, if you happen to already have a tractor and you're already storing diesel, then this is a really good way to go. I use it, uh, same as the other one, I'll run this for a couple of hours, charge my battery bank, and then I run the whole house for a day off of that. Okay, so we looked at the EcoFlow River Pro under the tight budget section, but now we're going to look at its big brother, the EcoFlow Delta Pro. So this thing is about five times bigger than the small one, and it costs about five times as much. So we're way up at the high end of medium budget now, at 5K. And while this is expandable and you can add a bunch of them, we're just here we're priced in at one, one of these units, a transfer switch, and 1,600 watts of solar is what I kind of priced in for 5K. I picked 1600 watts because that's the max amount that you can put on this unit and that's quite a bit. Remember the other one was just 200 watts so we're way up there now at 1600 watts. Still to put in perspective to run a whole house you're going to need about 10 times that. So kind of keep that in mind. But still it's a fair amount of power and you can do something with it. So let's look at the specs. Uh, 3600 watts continuous, 7200 peak and 3.6 kilowatt hours on the battery. So 3.6 kilowatt hours, if we look at that compared to what it takes to run a window AC for a day is about four to six depending on the size. These are 6,000 to 8,000 BTU air conditioners. Four to six kilowatt hours. Okay so you can run you can run that off of the battery probably for almost a day, a smaller one. So what else will it run? We got we can run window units, refrigerators, fans, small electronics. When you kind of get the idea, there's the main difference is it depends on how long you're out of power. So if you just have like a temporary outage for a few hours, then you can run a lot of stuff because you don't have to worry about using up your battery. But if you were in a long term, say a week or two weeks power outage, now you're down to just what you can harvest off of your solar panels which is 1600 watts for about five six hours a day let's say six kilowatt hours a day typical house runs off 30 kilowatt hours a day you're getting six that gives you an idea about how much you're going to run of what you normally run right so then you know you got to use it sparingly keep your fridge going run the air a little bit but really uh, run most of your stuff when the sun's shining and then be careful with your battery overnight. Uh, Pro is very quiet, rechargeable with solar. So unlike a gas powered generator, that's going to run out of gas eventually. And then you're going to have nothing. So here, uh, you're going to run weeks, months, years off of the solar panel. Clean power, good sine wave, and this thing is hugely expandable. I mean, I could talk about this for an hour, but let's just look at two. You know, if you just put two of these together and double everything, go to 3,200 watts on the panel, now you're at 7,200 watts continuous, you know, 14,000 peak and what is that, 7.5-ish kilowatt hours on your battery. And the other advantage is when you put two of them together, you can split phase the output and get 240 on the output. So then all this goes away. You can run a well pump, a water heater, I mean, you can run a lot of stuff if you put two of these together. The only problem is, of course, you're up now around $10,000 if you do that. And that's getting close to 
what you could build with a high-end system that would do considerably more, you know. Uh, although this remains portable, so there, there are always advantages depending on your specific situation. One thing is not right for everybody here. you got to find what works best for you. So next up, in the next video, we're going to jump into those high-end systems. Uh, both of them will be solar power and we'll see what you can do with a little bit more budget so hope you'll join me with on those but that's it for this one thanks for watching guys and i'll see you on the next one